Coach of Mixed Mag again. Black Music Coalition to host series of talks about progression since the Blackout Tuesday, which I'm happy to see. Some action, some follow up, um, you know, behind all these sort of performative steps that happen on social media. Remember when everyone was posting up their Blackout Tuesday square things and wanting to be part of the change and, and all that stuff. I remember someone emailing me or DMing me saying, oh, I'm, I feel conflicted. I don't really want to put it up because it doesn't do nothing. But I feel pressured. I have to. I was like, bruv, like, you don't have to do anything. You know what I mean? Actions speak louder than words chucking up a flipping square on your social media feed and then actually not doing anything um in real life to basically empower or to change things isn't necessarily the way to go and i would argue especially when it comes to techno and all that sort of stuff and dance music as important as representation is representation is probably a kind of complicated topic to talk about because i think representation is needed across the board and it's not just based on race and gender. It's needed just in general, right? Lineups are boring. They're all the same. The ADEs, the time warps, all these places. It's the same people playing the same places over and over again. And then every year they have a group of like 20, 10 to 30 people who they kind of say are new, who have been on the scene for ages, who they kind of prop up as the next ones going forward. But again, you have to wait for them to become the the kind of Nina Kravitz of the scene. And then the next cycle comes in. There's not like a fresh car um, carousel of flipping talent coming in, playing at the biggest places, sharing stages with the biggest players playing in you know clubs around the world because the system is fucked right at the moment we don't have even clubs especially in the uk there's not a lot of clubs that have resident dj uh, programs that would allow somebody like myself to kind of build myself up to be able to play from like a thursday then go to a friday then maybe go to a sunday then go to a saturday it doesn't exist so someone like myself has to either make a track make a remix get linked up with somebody way more, way more kind of famous than I am, um, play an opening set at a party that was well regarded. People see, oh yeah, he's good, book you for something else, put on my own rave. But it's, it requires a lot of kind of extra work outside of just being good at DJing to get that level performing. But when you have resident DJ slots, what that does, especially if it's a really good club, you play this resident DJ, fold your causes, your fabrics and stuff, your resident DJ at these kind of places, and you play on a regular basis on like, let's say a dead night, a Wednesday, a Thursday, maybe a Sunday, right? And essentially what you do is that you gain the understanding and the ability to play in front of a crowd, especially a large crowd, a crowd that's expecting a certain level of music, um, you know informed good taste levels da, 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 da. you're able to read the crowd build up your understanding of music how to dj how to read a room da, 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 da. and then over time that would allow you maybe to get better and better and better until the time until the point where you then become a headliner for you know one of the best nights of the, of the month whether it's halloween weekend on a friday whatever it may be right that's how your kind of progression usually goes you go from playing being resident at a club um, locally and then from there you kind of use that as a platform to kind of boost of up uh, hopefully give a chance to play in other places but we don't have that so you have to either put on your own night get clouded up or whatever and it's just you know it requires a lot of work a lot of extensive work obviously now it's better with social media you can upload a, a, a clipping clip of you playing um via a stream clip of you playing from a stream somewhere that clip can go viral and suddenly your career can kind of blow up overnight that can happen too but i think in general representation is needed across the board doesn't only necessarily go to black and brown people. I think there are many white people out there who are sitting around thinking, I've been playing for 12 years, mate. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm really good, but I haven't had the ability to play in places because I just haven't had the chance. No one's given me the opportunity to do so. Um, so without that kind of op opening an industry, how are they able to get into it? Especially now if it's all going to be just based solely on, on representing unrepresented communities and minorities, which obviously is important, but still it's just everyone needs to be represented in general. And then of course, then what you do with the minorities and people that are not represented and black and brown people is that you would say let's empower these communities so them to feel comfortable to come into these spaces come to these clubs be in these venues talk to these people because of course no one's denying that there definitely is an issue with how black and brown people are treated in these clubs and spaces but things are changing slowly but surely but you should put in a position where you can empower them with a fund or whatever it may be to set up their own nights, you know, uh, put on club nights in d different places, organize events, talks, whatever it may be, like, or maybe get some of the more high profile people from that scene to play in different festivals. So maybe introduce another crowd into there, whatever it needs, just to kind of give it a refresh. But I'm just glad to see they're doing a follow up event. But again, it's interesting to see what the topics are going to be, what they're going to talk about, how they're going to go about doing it. But I'm glad to see it's not just stopping at the Blackout Tuesday Square thing, it's progressing onto something else all right and to kind of putting words into to kind of putting those words into action and hoping now with the reopening of the dance music scene and you know nightlife scene in general that we're hopefully not just going to go back to how it was before we're going to go 
back into nightlife with a change or seeing different people different faces i always said before when i used to promote nights i used to sometimes just book a uh, female djs for the, for the for the heck of it especially like a couple of months back to back just to freshen things up there's no denying that there's definitely a different ambience and vibe sonically atmospherically ambience wise when you walk into a club and it's a female dj playing it's just different you know it, you feel it you know around you people are there it's just a different vibe different groove and you'd like that you want to introduce that kind of new sound new flavors um new sonics into the atmosphere that you're playing into instead of just the same old tired shit because that's not what you want that's not club culture is kind of built on and you want to obviously inspire the new generation to feel as if that they can step up and be able to fill in those shoes of those icons that they've seen before and any way to do it is to give them the opportunity and platform to do so and of course this is one of them so let's continue with the article Blackout Music Coalition to host a series of talks about progressions since Blackout Tuesday. It says the Blackout Music Coalition will host a series of panel talks to reflect um, on the industry since last year's Blackout Tuesday. One of the talks will be set in the iconic Elgar Room of the Royal Albert Hall, which is obviously pictured here. Um, in the collaboration with events organizers, the future is we'll discuss what the challenges, if any, have been made since Blackout Tuesday. This will be a, in front of a live audience of 150 people. Panelists Zion Edwards and Rich Free Two, what a legend. We'll assess how these changes are being accounted for and those who benefit, um, how we can ensure that these things are designed, or changes are designed to survive while also growing within the music world. In addition to the event, Royal Albert Hall on Friday, September 24th, BMC's YouTube account will be broadcasting two panel discussions shot the day before at the Abbey Road Studio One. The panelists will address their experiences as a black person navigating the area of industry and changes they've noticed in the field since Blackout Tuesday in this closed door session. Okay, interesting. That's going to be closed door. I'd, I'd actually want it to be open so I can actually view it or listen to it, you know, in real time myself because that'd be very kind of um in interesting to listen to them talk about it from the standpoint of labels of course you've got the ones listed there blackout tuesday was an international demonstration against police violence and racism the action which began as a protest to the murders of george floyd um amud Ahmed Arbery, Brianna Taylor in the music industry um, took place in June 2nd, 2020. Businesses that participated were asked to refrain from releasing music and engaging in their economic activities. At the time, the moment was um, criticized for being performative and tokenism, which I tokenistic, which obviously I said. Uh, it has now been over a year since Back Out Tuesday, and the aim is a series of programs just to review what changes have been made within the industry itself. The days after Black Out Tuesday, the Black Music Coalition was formed to hold the music industry accountable and ensure that the numerous pledges were made were kept i know a few of the fashion stuff weren't kept they kind of read writ manifestos about changes changing that and they're still the same cool but i do hope that what black countries they did do was empower people to kind of kind of be the change they wanted to see and just set up their own things whether it was this accountability sort of council whether you're setting up your own sort of instagram account and highlighting and promoting the work of unrepresented people whether it was you sending more pictures into places like resident advisor and mixed megan dj May, just to kind of put your voice front and center and kind of force them and shame them into kind of producing or publishing your work whether it's you kind of emailing clubs and kind of holding them hostage and blackmailing them into kind of booking you whatever i hope that many people just put stuff into action and try and put their best foot forward instead of just kind of waiting for things to change which it never does but i usually do things sometimes off the back of those kind of tragic moments in history like you know of course the death of george floyd and the other two in terms of um ahmed albury and brianna taylor some good can come of it in terms of changing an industry and allowing things to be nothing's ever going to be fair but to just be somewhat some, to be some sort of level of parity when i go to these club events when i go out you see the dance floor is so diverse you just want the the kind of lineup and the people putting these things together to be as diverse as the flipping people on the on the dance floor i go to places like a pussy palace and stuff and of course it's on like a certain level but those pussy palace parties are like so um or inspiring to see that many people from all these walks of life different genders races color creeds all raving and having a great time people playing that i have no idea who they are absolutely slaying behind the decks and even performing wise and it's absolutely fantastic to see really really fantastic and it goes to show that it is possible to do but you know you have to give those people a platform right to be able to to basically to be able to present that kind of party on the biggest stage to a bigger crowd in the hope that they can get the normies involved, in the hope that that will change or kind of 
refine their taste palette so that they'll be happy to see someone like that play at like a love box to be able to play a time warp all those kind of things but until you do that and make that change and make that step you're still going to have the same people playing in those kind of places you know whatever you know i don't need to mention the names you know who they are who play the same places all over again and we don't need it we don't need it especially going forward now it's just a little bit dead a little bit stale um there's far more interesting um layered textured rich music out there that exists doesn't matter on your color creed white black or whatever let's just have some freshness and hopefully off the back of this so there's some freshness gets um, introduced into it it says here to end they began writing an open letter in the industry noting that for far too long the black community has experienced racial injustice inequality and disenfranchisement um, throughout all parts of society and that here in the uk it's no different since sending letter they have been working as an organization on initiatives and actions that exemplify their only goal of combating anti-black racism and discrimination in the music industry i wish i could really tap into that sort of shit and be the person that kind of you know uses my color and my background as their way to kind of shoehorn and get myself into industry because it is a good tactic the same way how i've kind of talked about my friend who i said at the time that she was starting to kind of you know take djing seriously i was like hey you might as well just utilize the gift god-given gifts that you've been given in terms of your bazookas and just use them as a way to kind of you know get yourself front you know front and center and then hopefully when people kind of click on your videos or click on your profile because they like what they see they'll be like oh wow you're also an amazing dj it's gross it's nasty i understand but sometimes you have to use what you have to use just to get your foot into the industry it is what it is it's so cutthroat who was that kind of girl i forgot who she said um one girl and russian girl i forgot her name the russian girl that goes out with etta kyle forgot her name right really you know kind of cute little russian girl brunette she said that she used to dj if i'm not mistaken she would do these weird dj tours in china where you had to kind of dj as a t topless it was what's called a topless dj tour or something stupid like that where they basically hire all these pretty girls from parts of eastern or central europe to go and dj in places like china um in hotels or in you know underground bars and raves and whatever for these high level businessmen and you know obviously seriously gross and i think they got paid like i don't know a thousand dollars per gig and most of it went to whoever they kind of quote unquote pimp was but that was her way to get involved in the industry right again objectified um discriminant you know whatever yeah right? it's just you know i can't imagine the amount of abuse that she suffered um working in that kind of industry but that is what allowed her to get her foot in the industry and then from there be able to build on to do other things and i'm sure if she didn't do that naked dj thing more than likely she wouldn't have the career she has now it's just one of those weird things in djing and sometimes you just need a moment whether it's bless madonna you know f smashing the fuck out of that mixer whether it's um jada g playing some mad vinyl set a yeah, flipping deck mantle um everyone needs something right the hook the first thing cheryl you know having that um moment where the guy kind of pulled back her tune uh you know without permission all those things kind of give you the spark give you the highlight and then you take that and you kind of run with it so sometimes just using your race your gender to kind of get yourself through the door can be a worthwhile thing but just for myself i just can't do it i just want to be undeniable i want to be as good as my heroes and idols i looked up to and they didn't waste any time on these sort of things of course their time coming up was far different than i but i would much rather want to be able to get forward and get progress you know through the sweat of my own brow than just being tokenized in that way but the way the music industry is set up it kind of forces you to do so it does it really does and unless you take advantage of it whether it's a controversy you know just look at the back of the Jonah Lucas and flipping, uh, what's his name? Karen Civil situation. They're obviously beefing about a really serious issue, potentially fraud, potentially scamming, um, potentially, you know, lying about your ability to kind of deliver on a promise. All these kind of things are happening, you know, essentially stealing $60,000 or maybe not making as much use of it as he kind of wanted out of Karen Civil. And, you know, instead of using that moment to kind of, you know, hold her accountable and maybe get your money back, he's like, you know what, let's just use it as a time to kind of amplify and shine light on the stuff I'm doing. He then releases a single off the back of it. And now suddenly you got people talking about your music again. I probably won't talk about it before because of all the light that's coming on this really next situation onto a good situation. So, again, it's a bad thing. It's a bit cringy. It's awful. It says a lot about the society we live in at the moment, but it just is what it is. It really is what it is. And there's nothing we can do to kind of fight that sort of thing. So I understand the need to have a black coalition, a black music coalition in that regard. I understand the reason why people want to go to these kind of places to speak, um, to use them as an opportunity to kind of, you know, get themselves in the industry because it's really difficult out there to make it. It really is. Especially if you don't make, if you don't make music, or you don't make remixes or edits and you're not clouded up and you don't have you know good friends in the industry who can allow you to tour with them or open 
their parties, whatever. It's going to be difficult for you. Really, really difficult. It really is um, to make it just purely based on how good you are because I can't speak for other places, but London specifically, jeez, you could throw a stone and hit a DJ like, you know, in a couple of yards. The amount of ability to DJ, just f forget in most places. Just look at just like warehouse spaces in North London, in East London here in Hackney Wick. Just those kind of spaces outside of the people that play after parties for galleries, events, outside of people who play week on week in Soho clubs. All those things, these people are really good, really good. And you don't hear nothing about them. Um, and, you know, there's many, many of them out there. So for them to break through and become like the next people playing at these clubs, like, you know, the cause, the fold uh, on, a, on a weekly, monthly basis and with other places, it's very difficult to get to that level. Once you do, it's, it's fine. When you step, you know, like most stuff. And once you get that little look in, it's kind of fine to kind of carry on, but it's very difficult just to get that little carry on step. So hopefully this is a way to do so and put some of those things into action. Um, a bit of a report card there. The event against happening, what? Uh, when's it happening? Oh, September the 24th. It starts, so definitely keep an eye out for that. Keep an eye out for that.